Hey everybody, what's up? Thanks for coming back, I appreciate it. So today we are focusing on our shed again. This is part two of our shed build. And our focus today is gonna to be on our walls. We're gonna build the side walls and we're gonna build the back wall. I'm not gonna do the front wall. I'm gonna save that to do the front wall with the door at the exact same time. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Well, you gotta start somewhere and that is going to be our back wall today. Now I'm using regular two by four by tens here for my top and bottom plate. They're just basic pine. You can use pressure treated if you want, but it's really not necessary anymore because these walls are gonna be inside, unlike the floor, which is gonna be exposed to weather. Now we're marking this just like the floor again, every 16 inches on center. So I'm going past my mark at 16 and three quarters, which is half the width of a two by four. And then I'm marking on the back side of that over my 16 inch mark with an X. Then once we've got all our stud locations marked, we can transfer them to the other plate with our speed square. Okay, so for my back wall, I'm gonna be making it six and a half feet tall. Now it's just because I pulled that number out of thin air. I don't want the wall to be so high that the shed is just absolutely humongous because it's not that big of a space in my yard. But I also don't want it to be so low that if I walk all the way to the back of the shed, I smack my forehead on it. So six and a half feet just sounds like a good number to me. So that's what I'm going with. Now, six and a half feet total height. That includes my top plate, my bottom plate, as well as my second top plate. So you have to account for that. So I've got an inch and a half material times three. It gives me four and a half inches. So out of my studs for my wall, I have to take four and a half inches off and that will give me my entire back wall height of six and a half feet. So six and a half feet is 78 inches. That means I'm gonna cut my studs at 73 and a half inches and that will give me 78 inches overall once I add my plates in. Make sure you reset the height of your blade or the depth of your blade after cutting your plywood flooring. Cause otherwise you look stupid like me. Yeah, that worked better. One nice thing about building a shed like this is it is super limited tools build because really all you need is a tape measure, pencil, square, saw, and a drill. And you can build this entire shed. There's really nothing more to it than that. But once we got all of our studs cut, then we can march our top and bottom plates apart. Make sure not to twist them so that way all the marks still line up. Now that we got all our studs cut for the wall, you're gonna do what we did on the floor. And you're gonna wanna look down the board and crown them. Make sure the crown is facing up. It's less important on the wall than it is on the floor. The reason we do it on the wall is just to make sure our wall isn't wavy as we go along. So as long as the crowns are all the same way, it doesn't matter this time if you put them up or down, as long as they're all the same. Now that we laid out, we can go ahead and screw it together. Now, again, just like the floor, in case you didn't watch that video, one thing to keep in mind is when you're framing, you wanna add a screw per every two inches of material. So in this case, I've got a two by four, so I wanna use two screws. If you're using two by six, you're gonna to wanna to use three, two by eight, four, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm using three inch screws, three inch deck screws to attach these. Good rule of thumb is you wanna use uh, a fastener that's twice the length of the width of your material. So in my case, my width is an inch and a half, so I've got three inch screws. Now, if you have a case like this, where your fastener didn't suck the board up, and when you put it in, it kind of pushed back on you, you don't want to keep on just driving that screw in because you're just going to keep on driving it out and it's not going to suck this up. So what you need to do is actually back out the screw and then drive it back in. Close the hole. All right, so with our wall completely framed out and assembled, now there's two things we can do going forward. One we could skin the wall while it stands and then we could stand it up and then it would be completely done and sheathed. The second thing we can do is we can stand the wall up and screw it down to the floor and then you can sheet it once it's standing. Now, if you're not confident in lifting the wall once it's sheeted because it does get quite heavy, it's already heavy enough and you don't have a second pair of hands with you, 
Um, you may want to look into just standing the wall up as a screw to the floor and then sheet it. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to sheet it while it's laying on the ground here. It's just a little bit easier, but honestly, both ways work. Alright, so if you're going to sheet the wall once it's already standing up like this, a couple things you can do to make it a lot easier. So the first thing you can do is if you're going to pre-stand your wall like this, and then you're going to sheet it afterwards, make sure to take some of your three uh, or three and a half inch screws, it would be best, and you're going to take some of your screws and you're going to drive them through. Now make sure you use the coated screws because we're going down into our pressure treated wood here. And you're going to drive them down through your plate through your plywood and into your bottom floor joist. So you're gonna to wanna to keep them towards the outside edge of it, just to make sure you catch that inch and a half wide board at the bottom. The second thing, if you're gonna stand up your sheet afterwards, you're gonna to wanna to bring your sheet all the way down to the bottom of your floor joist here. Obviously holding it's gonna be quite cumbersome. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, take your measurements, cut your sheet uh, beforehand, making sure to account for your second top plate up top. So add an extra half an inch if you haven't added your second top plate yet already. And then bring it down to your skirting, pre-cut your sheet. From there what you can do is take some of your screws and you're just gonna drive in your screws with your drill between your floor joist and your uh, skid on the bottom. Put a couple of them in and then when you can bring in your sheet you can actually set the sheet down on the screws and that'll stop it from falling then all you got to do is hold it against the wall and then just drive it in with some inch and a quarter screws or nails whatever you got so to skin it first and then stand it up after what we got to do is same thing we got to make sure we account for our joist material down below as well as our floor material so i got to hang my board off that far which is four and an eighth inches so I'm just gonna hang it off exactly four and an eighth or, or close to it anyway I mean it's not rocket science so I'm pretty close right there then you can drive in a screw hold this corner measure your second edge over there drive in a screw hold that corner then you can go up and measure an inch and a half longer at the top for your top plate cut everything to size stand her up now one thing that's nice about this method is I pin the closest corner and I measure and pin that far corner. Now that squared the wall up, you can see when I push and pull on the plywood here, it's actually moving the wood frame below it as well. So this is basically going to square the entire wall up with the factory edge of my plywood, which I already know is straight and everything is self squaring from that point afterwards. Then in order to make sure that I have my top plate, I'm just using a scrap piece of wood and I'm making a mark so I can use that as a reference later on for when I cut the rest of the material off. With the next sheet of plywood in place, we can again line up the bottom edge, tack that down, and then make sure to push the top edge over. Again, that'll self-square the sheet in place, and then you can finish locking it down. For our last bit of wall sheeting, you can either measure and cut it off of the entire wall or you can set it in place, tack it down with a couple of screws and then cut it in place. I'm just marking the edge of my stud locations with a chalk line and then just running my circular saw along that in place. I just find it easy. Now we can cut the tops of our wall off. So I'm lining up my chalk line with that inch and a half measurement I made earlier with my scrap piece of two by four, and that's gonna account for my top plate. And then I can just run my circular saw and cut all of them off in one felt swoop. It's a lot easier to do it this way instead of just stopping and cutting each one as you go. And this way I know they're all gonna line up with each other. Okay, when it comes to screwing the rest of our wall sheeting to our studs behind them, obviously we can't see the studs anymore. So a good tip, snap a chalk line in line with the screw marks on your top and bottom plate all along the wall in line with all of your stud locations and that will actually give you a perfect chalk line to follow so you can just go ahead and screw your wall sheeting down along your chalk lines adding a screw about every 16 inches when it comes to standing the wall up, stability might be an issue. So about the halfway point in your floor, we're going to take a 2x4 and a 3 inch screw. Now holding the 2x4 away from the floor and don't drive the screw in very tight. That way we keep some slack in this and that'll actually act as a lever for us. Add another screw about a foot down from the top of the other end and then stand your wall up. 
Once you attach them together, it stops the wall from falling over because of triangulation, but we can still slide the wall side to side to flush up the floor. Once that's done, I'm going to use a bunch of my inch and a half long coated screws because we're going into pressure treated wood and about every 16 inches or so, screw that to your floor joist material. On the inside, in between every stud location, on the outside edge because we want to catch our outside rim joist, using three and a half inch coated screws, go ahead and attach the wall to the floor. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of jumped ahead a bit. I know, don't yell at me. I'm gonna show you how to build this wall. That's gonna go right here. But that wall right there, I already put together. Now I'm gonna grab the camera. I'm gonna show you what's up on that guy. Then we're gonna build this one. Now, as you can see, this wall fits inside of the front and back wall. And when I built it, I left the sheeting full length. I did not cut the tops off. I didn't even cut the sides. That's the nice part about making this shed eight feet from corner to corner, even with our sheeting material included, I didn't have to cut a thing on the front and back wall, or the side wall, sorry. And just like before, I brought it all the way down to the bottom of my floor joist, and the corners are self-squaring on each other because they lock in, push each other up together tight, and it's automatically square. Then you just attach it with a few screws to each other, and you do the exact same thing on the skirting, or on the wallboard material, into the two by four right here. Now I forgot to mention one small little detail. Some of you might be wondering what this extra stud here is for and going, oh, Jesse, it's not supposed to be there. It's not 16 on center. I know. The best thing is, like I said before, there are no hard and fast rules to building a shed. As long as my studs are still 16 on center, which they are, you can always add more studs if need be. When I used to build houses, we used to have to go back and follow the framers and add studs everywhere because some were just missed. It happens. But in this case, because we're hanging our sheets over to attach to our side pieces, that extra four inches obviously took away from my 16 inches on center. So I added an extra stud here. As you can see, that's where my seam is. Everything works. It's all good. So now it's time to build another wall. First thing I'm going to do, because our side wall is going to mount inside of our front and back wall, I'm going to take just a scrap 2x4, I'm going to flush it up, and I'm going to make a mark. Now this is exactly the dimension that I can take, throw my tape measure out, grab my mark, 88 and an eighth. That's 88 and a quarter, but I'm going to make it 88 and an eighth because a little bit under is a lot easier to fit than a little over. So with that, I cut my top and bottom plates. And then after that, I'm also gonna cut all of my stud lengths and those are gonna be the exact same as they were on the back wall. That mark right there is the, just like the rest of my framing marks. I went three quarters of an inch past, came back, so that gives me my 16 inches on center. For my extra board, that will hold the center joint between my two sheets of plywood. That's the way I made my mark right there. That is actually the center. So I made a C with my mark as opposed to an X to one side of it. That way I know that the board goes on the center of those lines. Then it's just a whole bunch of rinse and repeat with this wall. Crown all your studs, make sure they're all the same direction. Doesn't matter if it's in or out, just make sure they're all the same and fasten the entire wall together again. Having an overhang on the bottom as well as the side makes it kind of difficult to find our stud location. So I'm just using my tape measure as a reference to tell me exactly where the stud is. Once my measurements were good, I pinned the bottom corner and then I measured and pinned the top corner. Then as a reference, I can pull and push the wall until it's back into square. Once my bottom measurement matches the other side bottom measurement, I can pin that sheet down. Then I know the entire wall is square so I can slide my second sheet in and go ahead and fasten all of them down, all the studs, everything. 
So one thing you can see that I did, I took my entire width here, which obviously three and a half, I'm using half inch sheeting. It gives me four inches. So I left four inches of overhang on the side here for my two by four. And then same as before, I'm bringing my sheeting down. So it's four and an eighth. It's not the same chalk line. I had to go out and buy a new one. <laughs> I was boring my dad's and he's using red chalk in his. And guess who's colorblind to red? This guy. So you're trying to see red on like a brown type of wood, not gonna happen. So I had to go out and get a new one that's using blue chalk. So this way I can see it. I can see. Quick tip while screwing down your wall sheeting. Because it's only half inch plywood, it's super easy to just pile drive the screw right through the entire material. We don't want to do that. All you want to do is basically set it so it's just below the surface and stop. That is plenty of holding power for that screw. Now we can finally stand the wall up. So once it's stood up, slide it back into the corner and then you can use the back wall and the side wall to pull each other flush and square with each other. Then using one of the short screws, go through the sheeting into the stud behind it and that will lock the corners together. Now you can just go down the entire side, pinning it about every 16 inches or so and then along the bottom the exact same thing except switching to the coated screws. And then moving back inside, we can really lock and anchor the corners together. So about every 18 to 24 inches, we can use some of our three inch screws and screw our corner wall stud into the other corner wall stud. Then we can move down to the floor, flipping to the coated screws and screw our floor plate into our floor joist below. Okay guys, and that is it for this video. The shed is starting to come together. We've got our walls, our floor all done. Stay tuned for the next video because we're gonna do the front wall as well as the door. And then after that, it's just the roof to go. And then after that, we're gonna have an awesome shed. So if you guys like this video, thumbs up and a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate it. I really honestly do. I answer every single comment, every single email. So let me know you guys, I'd love to hear from you. Especially if you guys tackle something like this. If you guys build this guy, that's even cooler. The fact that you guys would tackle something like this because of a video that I made just makes everything worthwhile. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.